Well, this is the TrekPow 350 solar charger. I'm going to talk about it. You can decide if it's something you can use. Well, this one's small. Um, it's, uh, they call it 350 watt. It's actually 300 watt or 296 watt uh, continuous with a 350 watt peak. And it's got all the goodies on it that you would expect to see with a couple of surprises. Sorry we're not out in some pleasant looking beautiful campsite like, nor like we normally are, but it's below zero out there. It's been below zero for the last two weeks. Today it warmed right up. It got up to, I think, plus two. <laughs> Anyhow, that's why we're in my basement. Uh, let's do, I want to just tell you a little bit about the uh, specifics on this, and then um, I did some testing on it. We'll get into that also. Um, first of all, it's, um, like I mentioned, it's 300 watts continuous, and uh, it's when you first look at it, it's got the normal uh, accoutrements on it. It's got your... Um, uh, pure sine wave uh, electrical outlets here. There's two of them. And um, let's see here, 110 volt, 350 watt total. But that's a 350 watt peak. So these 110s down here are designed to put out 300 watts and with a 350 watt surge. And like I mentioned, pure sine wave. It's got your um, two USBs and a USB-C, and these are quick charge ports, and then it's got a USB-C down here also. It's got a um, wireless phone charger on the top, and that's a handy thing to have, but I'm not, uh, I'm not so high-tech. I don't have a phone that does that yet. <laughs> now here's something. It's got these 12-volt uh, accessory outlets here, the ones for the 8-millimeter uh, barrel plug. And then it's got your input down here for your charging. And one thing that I noticed is that these barrel plugs are normally rated at 3 amps a piece. There's two of them here, right? But this one is 3 amp, and this one up here is 8 amp. You could actually run a pretty sizable 12 volt appliance off of that one. And then um, this 12 volt accessory outlet over here, this cigarette lighter plug, this is regulated. So that's pretty nice. And on the back, it actually has a usable light on it. It's a, it's a nice, broad floodlight that actually lights up the room instead of some flashlight. Another feature it has is um, it does sense when it's not being in use. For example, if you turn it on and walk away and, you know, it's charging your phone and then your phone is charged and it's not putting out any more power, it will shut itself off. So the problem with these is normally if you're running a refrigerator and your refrigerator cycles off, um, you don't want this to turn off. So by clicking the on button two times in a row, click, click, um, it will stay on and then uh, keep powering your refrigerator. Speaking of which, this is how it did on my refrigerator. I want to run my Alpacool T50. It's a 55 quart. 12 volt compressor refrigerator and just see how long this will go. So let's see here. Okay, it did come on. And now doing it that way, it should stay on. And now my refrigerator is on. It says 30 degrees. I have it set at 34. So I'm just going to leave it set at 34. And the way I do these tests all the time is I pre-chill. I run the refrigerator and pre-chill it and it's got two gallons of water in it that are also at the same exact temperature of 34 degrees. And then I, I let it um, normalize. So I just let the refrigerator and the water jugs all come to the same um, uh, temperature before I start the test. So that's what we're doing. Now we'll see how long this can run. Okay, it just, uh, the refrigerator just cycled on. It usually cycles between 38 degrees down to about 32 degrees and kind of averages out around 34. Um, when I measure the inside temperature, it's usually right at 34. This is showing um, 29 to oh, 37 watts here, 39 watts. Now this is rated at 296 watt hours 
and I'm expecting that uh, you can probably get about 80% out of it. So that would be 237 watt hours. This refrigerator averages approximately 13 watt hours per hour, 13, draws about 13 watts per hour. And I'm expecting this uh, Trek POW to last about 18 hours. So I guess we'll see tomorrow. Well, at this point, it's been 25 and a half hours. Maintaining that says about 30 right now. So it's just, this just, the Alpacool just shut off. Um, you got to remember though, the ambient temperature is just 66 to 68 degrees here where this is sitting. And I, although I'm totally impressed with this, uh, if it was hot, if it was 80 or 90 degrees in here, you'd probably only get about half this time that we're getting out of this. The um, impressive thing is that it's running the refrigerator. Now, what I'm going to do, though, is I don't know how long it's going to take. I'm going to let this go all the way dead for testing purposes, and then we're going to see how long it takes to charge this up. Okay, I took it all the way down to nothing. Basically, it had a bar left, I guess. So evidently, it's got a circuitry that protects it from going too low. It ran this refrigerator for 32 and a half hours. I was pretty impressed with that, even at this temperature. And um, now I'm charging it up from basically from flat, from where it shut itself down. We'll see how long it takes to charge up. Right now, um, off the um, wall charger here, it's got uh, oh, around 58 watts going into it. So it did pretty good on my refrigerator. It ran it for a long time. Of course, it was kind of cool in the room at, you know, 66, 68 degrees, but you know, it, it didn't have any problems doing it. It didn't cycle off or shut off or nothing. It just ran it. So that was good. And the another test I ran on this was to see how efficient it was. And this is how that went. Okay, now I've got a little 95 watt hot plate here or warming plate. And we'll just see how much we get out of this um, from the AC outlet. How many uh, uh, kilowatt hours we get out of this before it, uh, before it dies. It's currently drawing about 84 watts. So I was able to get 270 watt hours out of this, and that comes out to about 92, 93% efficiency, which is really high. Of course, it, it won't let itself go too low, so it, it saves a little bit of battery power. And also, it had to run its cooling fan every now and then, so that was pretty exceptional. This is what the uh, front screen looks like. You can see it's got everything on there. It's got the um, USB. It's got the DC. I can turn on the AC down here and it shows the AC. This is all the wattage out right here. And then you can see it's got the battery uh, condition level over here. And down here below, if you're charging it, it'll show how many watts are going into the battery. Every time you turn it on, the AC, on or off, you'll hear the uh, fan come on momentarily. <clears throat> now, another thing you need to know is, can you do pass-through charging? In other words, can you be charging this and running current out of it at the same time? And the answer is a definite yes and no. Um, you can use the DC ports, all of them, while you're charging it, but you can't use the AC. Now, there's a good reason for that. Pass-through charging is not a good thing on any solar charger because it, it tends to make the battery inside overheat, or it could make the battery inside overheat. So by not allowing you to use the AC while you're charging it, they're just protecting the lithium battery inside. Now the only accessory this comes with is a wall charger. It does not come with a cigarette lighter charger. When I run this completely dead, which I've done two times now on purpose in testing it, uh, it does take a, a good seven hours to recharge. But for me, this is the kind of thing I'm going to grab for a day trip. When Linda and I are heading out to our, our um, off-grid property for a day to work or something, we're going to drag this along so we can charge our phones, charge our camera batteries, things, things of that sort. Because of its small size, I'm going to be grabbing this one first and more often than I'm going to grab, uh, say, my Jackery 1000, which weighs 22 pounds. So this one's going to get used a lot. You grab it out of the back of the car and take it over to the table and plug your stuff into it. It's just handy. 
So what's not to like about it? There are a couple things. Um, I don't like the fact that this, uh, your charging port is right below the um, auxiliary um, outlets up here. I wish that this was on the back side. Now, I did plug the charging cable into these ports. On They're the same size. So you're able to plug into that if you take your charging wire. And you can... Anyways, this does have um, voltage protection, so it automatically protected itself. But it would be nice if this was on the back. Uh, you're not going to hurt it if you accidentally plug it into one of the other ones, but just a design feature. And the only, only other thing is that it does take eight hour, almost eight hours to charge. But if you're just using it for day trips, like I mentioned, then that's not going to affect you at all. If you're trying to use it on a camping trip, it does take a long time to charge it back up again. Okay, if you liked the review, if you liked the video, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around.